we had a boat and uh, on the south shore of Long Island, and uh, Billy was friend, friendly enough with Barbara, my sister, and me, and so we would uh, occasionally have him out on the boat on the weekends, and he would come out, and uh, he was just a really, really nice young man. Uh, we really enjoyed doing things together. And as we started going into um, junior high school and, and then into high school, things started to change a bit. But Billy and Barbara and I remained friends. Barbara and Judy, his older sister, were good friends. And so we entertained them, we did things with them. And it probably was in high school, in the mid-60s, that we, um, Billy, uh, didn't, Billy and his sister did not have a television set. And we had a television set, and we invited uh, Billy over to watch the Ed Sullivan Show for the first Beatles um, uh, show on the Ed Sullivan Show. And uh, Billy watched the show, and having been a musician for a number of years, he had been in the uh, Fork Lane Elementary School Band, he was in the Junior High School Band, he was in the Hicksville High School Band. And there was a spark that night. It was a Sunday night, I remember it very clearly. And he watched the Beatles, and he was just enthralled and totally deep into uh, watching them. And, and it was, I mean, Barbara and I loved what we were hearing and it was great, and, but there was something special with Billy, something, there was a connection there that was very special. And uh, it, was, it was that night that uh, he, he um, he later told me it, it was that night that made him want to be a rock and roll singer. And so that was the beginning. At, at that time, uh, soon after that, Billy was uh, starting to get into, he, he was separating from the rest of the neighborhood. Uh, we were all kind of you know, real straight kids. And Billy started to get into gangs and they would actually have these scheduled rumbles, they called them. And they would, they would, ha they had gangs and they would actually go and they'd have these fights and it, it was so foreign. And he, at that point he was starting to wear leather and other things. He was still practicing his piano and taking piano lessons, but at, at a point he started uh, putting his fists into uh, a beaker of vinegar because he had heard that it would help toughen up his skin. So that if he got into a fight, his, his skin would be uh, tougher on his on his uh, fist. And so it was about that time that uh, we started to separate uh, as, as far as spending time together. And it was probably very soon after that uh, Ed Sullivan show where he committed his life to being a rock and roll singer. And as we saw Billy going down this different path than we were, uh, it, it seemed like uh, Billy was the least likely person in our neighborhood to succeed because he was dropping out of high school. He, um, and he ultimately dropped out of high school. He was with these gangs and he was just um, running around a bit wild. And so it, it didn't seem like he was on a good path. Um, 
there were periods of time where his mother had some, uh, and she was his only parent at that point, where she had some psychological difficulties, and, and that made it, uh, his life situation even more difficult. At the same time, he was also starting to put together a band. And I think the very first band he put together was, were called the Hassles. And I think that that was somewhat indicative of the gang culture that he was involved with, that he would call the band the Hassles. And they had some moderate success on Long Island as a local band, started playing clubs, and they, they did have success and, and started to get a following at that point. I uh, lost, uh, while I was in college in, uh, in upstate New York, I had lost contact with Billy and he was on, on his own uh, doing, doing things that were different, but he was primarily a local phenomenon. And I, I remember uh, one time I was uh, driving to the North Shore of Long Island and I hadn't seen Billy in a few years and I was driving up in a town called Cold Spring Harbor. And I was just driving up the road and I looked to my left and sitting out there on the porch was Billy Joel. And so I stopped and we talked and uh, we, we had a great talk. And this was right after the first um, album had been produced. And it was an album called Cold Spring Harbor. And the album had been um, produced and recorded, but somehow or another it had been recorded at a somewhat slower speed than it actually had been played at. And so the sound came out a bit different than the actual, if you will, Billy Joel and playing the piano and such. But Billy and I reconnected in our early 20s and I would occasionally uh, go to see him in local clubs around Long Island and in New York, New York City. And I remember I would go to a, this bar in New York City and he would be playing and the place would have tables and not, you know, it wasn't a concert type of venue. And it would just be tables and people drinking and a bar and, and uh, he had married by that time and his, his wife was his manager. So he had, was having this local uh, success in, on Long Island and into New York. And it was during those periods of time that uh, I believe he became the piano man because it was a number of years that he was playing that bar scene and if you listen to the words of the piano man, you hear the story of playing those little venues, people coming up to him. I mean, between sets, I would sit and talk with him and we would just, you know, kind of hang out. And it was, a, it was so informal, very intimate, and uh, really pleasurable.